Well, hello there. Welcome to School of the Spirit. I'm excited to be here with you again to share with you um, insights, scriptural insights into the matters of the Spirit as it relates to a believer's work with God. Some of the basic things that we stand the chance of having an encounter with um, that will contribute to our growth and our transformation as um, believers in the ways of God. So I welcome you once again. And today's episode is going to be exciting, deep, and revelatory. We trust God for wisdom. As a matter of fact, let's even begin by saying a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for my viewers right now. You are the one who opens the eyes, open the eyes of our understanding, infuse us with your wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Open up depths of scriptures. Let us come into the knowledge of the things that make for our growth and that will position us for an advantage in the earth by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you. And thank you for tuning in once again. That said, we'll go right into the episode for today. Today we are going to um, be talking about what I've decided to caption transformation by prayer. Transformation by prayer. Now, a lot has been spoken about the subject of prayer in the body of Christ now really appreciate um, every man or woman that God has used one way or the other to either speak about or to write about the subject of prayer. I can boldly say we have a very robust um, amount of revelation, scriptural revelation on the subject of prayer that has been taught for many generations in the body of Christ. And um, I expect that to be because prayer is one of the fundamental aspects of our Christian faith. You simply cannot do without the force or the life of prayer. Uh, but today, in as much as we may start with some basics, uh, we will try to venture into areas that may not have been so much talked about for better understanding. And um, some of the things I'll share, all, all of which are uh, founded on the revelation of scriptures, but some of them are actually from personal experiences. You know, it becomes very easy to teach about a subject in the kingdom when you've had an experience of it. In my little life and work with God, I've experienced the power, the force, and the life of prayer. It's something I love. To do and so I'd like to share from my limited experiences uh, to see how much help that can bring to you to encourage you to tour the path of transformation that is produced in the place of prayer first of all what is transformation transformation is defined or I would like to define transformation as the process that leads to the change of form in the life or existence of an individual, whether that individual is an organism, a thing, or a person. The process that leads to the change of form. You know, that's what it means. The word transform means to change form. So the process that leads to the change of form of a person of a thing, of an organism. You can also say it is the change of form or the change that presents a better form of a thing. The change that a thing or a person experiences that produces or presents a better form. So a change that seeks to present a better form 
that means transformation will occur in levels and it can be graded using certain parameters now there are two things i'd like you to know about prayer at this point before we begin to talk about what transformation uh, by prayer really is so prayer is a spiritual activity powered by spiritual energy with the end of producing change a spiritual activity powered by spiritual energy with the end the aim of it is to produce change so the goal of prayer is to produce or to command change that is why transformation is possible by prayer you know prayer changes you first yeah prayer impacts the individual first and I believe that God changes you so that he can change the world around you through you God changes you in the place of prayer so you can be empowered to change the world around you another thing I'd like you to know about prayer is that prayer is a command and a necessity for the well-being of a believer it's a command and a necessity for the well-being of a believer there are scriptures that uh, instill in us the command of prayer from god the bible says in colossians 4 verse 2 that we should continue earnestly in prayer in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, it says, pray without ceasing. Ephesians 6, 18, it says, praying always. So it's a command from God. And it's also a necessity. It's something that every believer needs for survival. It's something that we need to thrive. It is needed for our well-being. In Psalms 55, verses 16 to 17, I'd like to read that scripture for you. It gives us the picture of the necessity of prayer for a believer. Psalms 55, verse 16 to 17. He says, As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and noon I will pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. The necessity of prayer towards the well-being so prayer is a command for us and a necessity it's like a force a life force for everything that the believer will experience and everything that the believer will become is backed up or is engineered by the force of prayer that's why i said it's a spiritual activity powered by spiritual energy that produces change Now in Luke chapter 9, I just give you two scriptural examples of people who experienced transformation when they prayed. And then we'll get right deep into um, the subject. In Luke chapter 9, let's draw an example from the Lord Jesus himself. You know, Jesus spoke a lot about prayer. As a matter of fact, prayer was one of the first earliest teachings of Jesus. In scripture you find that in Matthew chapter 6 Jesus thought about prayer he said when you pray not if you pray prayer fasting and giving he didn't use the word if he used the word when um, stressing on or emphasizing on the necessity of prayer in Luke chapter 9 verse 28 to 29 the Bible says now it came to pass about eight days after these things that he took Peter John and James and went up on the mountain to pray as he prayed the appearance of his face was altered and his robe became white and glistening so here is Jesus experiencing physical transformation while in prayers Jesus probably didn't know he was going to have this experience because prayer was a usual part of his life and his ministry while he prayed he was transformed 
all of a sudden his face changed and he began to emit the glory of God that was within him. It was a, a change that came from inside out that began to manifest because it was derived from an energy that was generated in the place of prayer. Another example of someone who experienced transformation in prayer is the man Elijah. And this was captured by the Apostle James. In James chapter 5, we better want to read from verse 16 to 17. He says, Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Then in verse 17 it says, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. In King James translation, it often says Elijah was a man of like passions. It says Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years years and six months in verse 18 the bible says and he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and the earth produced its fruit he was able to change seasons change timings through his prayer and you know when there was drought at the contest of mount camel the people were brought back to god so elijah was a man who was able to see national transformation, a change that caught across an entire nation because he prayed. It was the energy generated in his prayer that commanded that level of transformation, which we will talk about much later. But I want to get into sharing with us on the different stages of transformation by prayer the different stages of transformation that is produced in prayer that I believe that once and again every believer will experience the different stages. Stage number one, I call it the heart stage. The first stage of transformation that a believer will experience in the place of prayer is the heart stage. In other words, the heart seems to be the first or the initial place where a believer will experience the change that is produced by prayer. Remember I said prayer is a spiritual activity that is powered by a spiritual energy. So the place of prayer, spiritual energy is generated not only to sponsor the act of prayer but also to engineer the trick the change the transformation that is produced so the first stage is the heart stage prayer must affect the heart of a believer and there is a level of transformation that happens at the heart stage in jeremiah 29 verse 12 to 14 in jeremiah 29 verse 12 to 14 it talks about the heart stage of transformation that happens in prayer. It says, Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me, when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you to the place from which I caused you to be carried away captive. Now, this is God speaking about what happens when we pray and seek Him with all our hearts. First of all, He says we are found by Him and then He will bring us back or out of captivity. This is a change that happens when we pray. So, the heart stage is the initial stage of transformation that occurs in the place of prayer. And there are two things that will happen um, at this stage. First of all, what I call increased devotion. When a believer experience, experiences the hard stage of transformation by prayer, 
the first sign will be increased devotion. In Psalms 84 verse 2, Psalms 84 verse 2, it says, My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. My heart and my flesh cries out for the living God. So, you find increased devotion. Increased devotion. All of a sudden, there is a hunger in the heart of that individual for more of God. This happens when the individual begins to respond to prayer. It's like there is a stirring of hunger in the heart of that individual to want to seek God. And you know, God is found when we seek Him with the whole of our heart. So that's the first sign, increased devotion. A longing to want to spend time with God, to want to be with God, to be in the house of God, to be around prayer meetings, always seeking God. The desperation is a sign. The desperation for God is a sign that that person has experienced the hard stage of transformation. Another sign, still under the hard stage of transformation, is the stirring of faith. The stirring of faith or the attitude of believing. You know, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 10, that with the heart man believes unto righteousness. So faith and believing is a thing of the heart. Now, there is a stirring of faith that happens in the heart of an individual when they pray. In Mark 11, 23 to 24, the Bible says, Whoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed from here and cast into the sea, and not doubt in their heart, but believe that those things which they say shall come to pass, they will have whatever they say. Then verse 24 tells us how it happens. It says that whatever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive, and you will have them. So when you pray, all of a sudden, faith, belief is stirred up in your heart. So that person's heart has experienced transformation by prayer. And because faith is present, he or she will have whatever he asks. So stage number one is the heart stage. You must experience transformation by prayer at this level. A change that affects your heart and repositions you right as you seek the Lord in prayer. Stage number two, the mental stage, the mental stage or the mind stage, the mind stage. This now affects the mind component of your soul. It transcends from your heart into your mind. Of course, our minds are the organ of interaction in our soul. And there are three signs that will occur to show that a person has experienced mental transformation by prayer. First of all, repentance. Repentance is a very strong sign that someone has experienced transformation in his or her mind that is produced by prayer. How do I know? You see, the word repentance, the Greek word for the word repentance or to repent is the word metanoia. Meta in the Greek is change. Noia is mind. It means change of mind. So to repent means to change your mind. When the Bible says God repented that he made man, he changed his mind. So one of the ways you know that a person has experience mental transformation that is impacted by prayer is they begin to have a change of mindset a change of mind in second chronicles chapter 33 verse 10 to 13 the bible spoke about a king called hezekiah who experienced this sorry manasseh now manasseh was an evil king he was the son of hezekiah and um, he committed a lot of atrocities while he was king of Judah. From verse 10. And the Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they would not listen. Therefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the army of the king of Assyria, 
who took Manasseh with hooks, bound him with bronze fetters and carried him off to Babylon. Now when he was in affliction, he implored the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. When he was in affliction, that was changed now. He humbled himself and he began to seek God. He began to plead for the mercy of God. Verse 13 says, And prayed to him, and he received his entreaty, heard his supplication, and brought him back to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord was God. So while Manasseh was in affliction because of his sins and his atrocities, he had a change of mind towards God. He decided not to become rebellious any longer. And he began to pray and seek God. So repentance is one of the signs. All of a sudden people begin to have a change of mind towards God. They have a change of mind. They no longer look at God with the lackadaisic attitude or the unseriousness mindset. They begin to repent of their old ways. And then a desire to know more of God is triggered in them. Sign number two is a change of desires, thoughts. A change of desires, thought patterns and attitudes. A change of desires, thought patterns and attitudes. This is another sign that a person has experienced mental transformation by prayer. Their desires begin to be re-engineered. They no longer begin to desire the things of this world again or the things of the flesh. They begin to entertain desires for the things of God again. A desire to spend time with God. A desire to be passionate about the things of God. Their thought patterns begin to change their attitudes. You begin to put on godly attitudes, godly virtues. You know, the Bible will always say in the New Testament to put on Christ, to put on the new man. It's by change of attitudes. This is one of the signs of mental transformation that is impacted by prayer. Sign number three is the reception of visual impressions or impulses of the Spirit. That person begins to receive visual impressions or impulses in their mind. Impulses speaks of waves that they hear. Impression speaks of images that they see. So they begin to see and hear in their minds. Of course, your mind is responsible for the visions and the hearings of the Spirit. Yes. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians 1.18, that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. It is with the eyes of your imaginations, which is in your mind, that you see and hear in the things of the Spirit. You know, they begin to receive visual impressions, receive the impulses of the Spirit. They are opened up to visions, experiences in the realm of the Spirit. Their mind becomes familiar. Their mind begins to interact with the realm that is beyond. I read a scripture that just fully explains this stage number two, which is the mental stage of transformation by prayer. Job chapter 22, verse 21 to 27. Job chapter 22, verse 21 to 27. I believe it captures everything that can occur um, under the stage of mental transformation through prayer. From verse 21, it says, Now acquaint yourself with him and be at peace. Thereby good will come to you. Receive please instruction from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you will be built up. You will remove iniquity far from your tents. Now the word return there is an act of repentance. That covers the first sign of repentance, which was one of the signs of mental of the stage of mental transformation through prayer. He says, then you will lay your golds. He says, you, if you return to the Almighty, you will be built up. You will remove iniquity far from your tents. Your tents, change of desires, thoughts, patterns, attitudes. You don't want to have anything to do with sin or iniquity again. You want to please God. Verse 24 says, then you will lay your gold in the dust and the gold of Ophir among the stones of the brooks. 
So the things we held on to, material acquisition, financial resources that seem to have taken the place of God in our lives, we sort of lay them down. Still talking about change of desires. And then in verse 25, he says, Yes, the Almighty will be your gold and your precious silver. For then you will have your delight in the Almighty and lift up your face to God. He said, you will make your prayer to him. He will hear you and you will pay your vows. So one of the stages of transformation by prayer is a mental stage. It will affect your mind. It will bring you to a place of repentance, change your thought patterns, change your attitudes, your desires are be re reconfigured. And then your mind begins to gain momentum, being impacted by the spirit spiritual energy that is generated in the place of prayer to have experiences of visual impressions, uh, 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 visual impulses by the spirit in the place of prayer. Well, that being said, that's how much we can take today, these two stages. In the next episode, we may, I may give more examples of people who experienced this. And then we'll get into other stages of transformation that are caused in prayer. Thank you so much for tuning in and for being a part of this episode. And I believe that everything shared here will be uh, fundamental for you to go do your more search in scriptures and then gain knowledge in the subject of transformation by prayer. God bless you. Thank you.